that first appointment, we've found out about them, we've got their intake form, and then we've got these goals. The goals can be vague and they can also be very exact. The very exact ones are great. We've got to get a time frame working on those. We need to make sure that there's a timeline for our client. For the number of years you've been sick, that's a month for getting better. So if a person's come to you and they've been unwell for 10 years, then you've got 10 months of work ahead of you. And if they understand this, that they've got 10 months of work ahead of them, that yes, we can give them the odd magic bullet here and there, but we've also got a lot of slow change that needs to be enacted. And if they understand that, then they will work with you for that 10 months. If they've only been sick because they've, I always like to say barley belly, they've just got back from overseas, but they've somehow managed to pick up a bug and they've got dodgy tummy. We can sort that pretty quickly, can't we? Because it's so quick, it's so new. Let's just sort that out. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. Now, after last week's constipation, I thought that we should talk more about business today because I thought when we're setting up online and we're getting ourselves ready, we need to have things ready. So I thought, well, let's just go through a few of those and see and tell you what I use, um, what's available to you if you're setting up right now. And if you've been in business for a while, you might be thinking, oh, yeah, I use that one and I use that one. And all that form that I use is absolutely dreadful. Maybe there's a better one out there somewhere. So obviously, like everybody else who's a practitioner, we've got forms that we give out to our clients. So I have a very set system of doing things because having trained as a coach, I follow a coaching system. I found as soon as I trained that I had a much better return rate and I had a much better um, people were people just better at doing everything I asked them because I asked in a different way I changed my expectations which changed their expectations so meant that we were able to meet in the middle better and um, and they were able to understand and I had the compliance because I worked in a different way. So I do a lot of training in coaching. There's a lot in the academy on coaching and there will be a coaching course coming up for naturopaths, specifically for naturopaths and nutritionists. So I guess anyone and homeopaths, if you're a homeopath, so anyone who's currently in an ingestive modality um, so that you can get the best for your clients from the way you work in practice. So I thought, well, let's have a little think about some of the things that I do and some of the paperwork that I use and why I do it like that. So at the first appointment, when I see the client, I've got their intake form. Now, my intake form is in the academy along with all my paperwork. You don't get it immediately because the first seven days are free. So, you know, you do actually have to decide, yes, I'm going to commit and join, not just I'm going to go in and download. So... Um, but you might get in there and decide, no, it's not for you. And so that's what the seven days is for. But you might get in there and go, this is so for me. I want to do this and then be in and really get into it because there's so much in there. And we talk, We I see everybody three times a month. We have a Q&A and you can submit questions if you can't be there live. It's all recorded into the Facebook group. And um, so it's fab. Everybody catches up. And of course, we've got the um, retreat, the virtual retreat in October. But back on point here, what we're talking about. We were talking about that first appointment. So the client comes in, we've got our intake form. We know what their problem is, what they're telling us about. We've um, got the consent. My consent is within my intake form that they're consenting to see me, that they don't have to do anything, um, you know, against their will, that they need to tell me if there's any changes. All of the things are in my um, intake form. So all they've filled out is an intake form. I know what's wrong with them. They've signed their consent or digitally signed the consent because they've also paid me. So they've agreed, they've ticked boxes. And I ask for their top three goals. 
So that's my second to last question. What are your top three goals in working with me? I've also got a box that says, what are the questions you would like to ask me? Now, those top three goals are often poorly formed. So there'll be one cracker that's very obvious. I want my IBS to go away or um, I want to have my periods back or, you know, the, the, there might be the big one there. But then there might be a couple of vague ones. I want to get healthy. Um, I want to live longer. <laughs> so then, you know, then come the vague ones. After the one specific, then we get the two vague. But there are always, they always have meaning for that person. So when you speak to that person at the first appointment, you've gone through their intake form and you've asked them the questions and, you know, the Finding, finding Your Flow webinar that I do is where I go through um, or those questions and the timing so do come along to one of those if you haven't already lots of people come to them all of the time they come it's twice a year <laughs> they come a lot actually I was thinking of doing it a third time this year because it's been so popular this year but um, that first appointment we found out about them we've got their intake form and then we've got these goals now the goals can be vague and they can also be very exact the very exact ones are great. We've got to get a time frame working on those. We need to make sure that there's a timeline for our client. If you've been, for the number of years you've been sick, that's a month for getting better. So if a person's come to you and they've been unwell for 10 years, then you've got 10 months of work ahead of you. And if they understand this, that they've got 10 months of work ahead of them, that yes, we can give them the odd magic bullet here and there, but we've also got a lot of slow change that needs to be enacted. And if they understand that, then they will work with you for that 10 months. That's logical. If they've only been sick because they've, <laughs> I always like to say barley belly, they've just got back from overseas. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's pretty irrelevant right now, isn't it? They've somehow managed to pick up a bug and they've got dodgy tummy. We can sort that pretty quickly, can't we? Because it's so quick, it's so new, let's just sort that out. Whereas something has been going on for a long time, perfect example, um, client of mine. So a man came to see me a couple of years ago. Was it a couple of years ago? It was around the time everyone was retrenched anyway. So that's last year, isn't it? 2020. So he'd been retrenched and the things had changed for him and he was working from home. And, um, and so he actually had time to come and see me. Now, the point about him coming to see me is his partner and the partner's son had come to see me eight years ago. And she came to see me straight after their holiday. And so she was resolved. Her problems were resolved within a month. Easy, done. He waited eight years to come and see me. <laughs> so it wasn't, you know, so I was like, well, that's eight years. That's eight months. You know, I said, hopefully it won't take us eight months, but it might take us that long. You know, we know what's wrong because she had it. She was tested eight years ago and you all got it. You were all overseas together. You all got it, but you waited. And so it's harder because it's entrenched. These issues are entrenched now. And he understood that, totally cool with it. So we had to do all the changes and all the things and he stopped seeing me at about the seven month mark. So I wasn't far off. You know, eight months was pretty, pretty about right, you know. So when I see people at that first appointment, I want to make sure that those goals are goals that are medium to long term as well as short term goals. So the short term goal might be the resolution of the dodgy tummy, um, but it could be the longer term you know, period pain for the last 20 years. So there will always be that one exact, maybe two exact and then a third that's nebulous. The third that's nebulous, so that I want to get healthy, that's where your program, if you've written one, has come in. Because if you've got a healthy living program, then they can be doing that on the side of seeing you. And you sell them, sell that to them in the consult. Probably not in the first consult, if they've got two um, blazing problems. But you might mention it. I certainly mention it in the first consult and I've had lots of people in the first consult say, yeah, yeah I'll just do I'll just do the program as well. Let's just do that so that I've got everything going on at the same time and I've sold them the program in the first appointment, my healthy living program. So um, when we've got them there in that first appointment and we've learned a lot about them and we know all about them 
medically. We don't actually know that much about them emotionally, socially, spiritually, and all the other part of what we like to do. We're holistic practitioners. So it's about the whole person and the whole body. And yes, we do niche into our areas. I'm certainly not any, I used to see fertility patients, not anymore. I don't, you know, that's been a long time since I've seen anyone for fertility. So because we get better at our own subject matter, but at the same time, there is the holistic person that we're dealing with. So the person who's dealing in fertility is also dealing with that huge social and emotional issues that go with the person who's trying to have a baby or trying to get pregnant, sorry, not trying to have the baby, trying to get pregnant in the first place. So when we really think about how are we going to get to the bottom of what's going on, because many of the problems that our clients exhibit to us are long-standing and a lot of them are based in emotion. They haven't just come from a virus. Viruses switch on things all of the time. Um, this isn't new, you know. <laughs> we're hearing the word virus like 200 times a day right now. But viruses have and do switch on things in our bodies. It's a very, very common occurrence for someone to have a simple virus and something dreadful to suddenly appear. Um, so... When we think about the slightly more nebulous side of their questions, of their goals, of their three goals, that's when it's a great idea to hand over a motivation profile. So, you know, when we hand over that motivation profile after we see them at the appointment, after that, then we can go through the motivation profile. There might be another profile you want to hand them at the same time. I'll go through all of this um, it's in the academy, but is it all in the academy? Not all of it's in the academy. Some of it's in the academy, but I will actually do a proper coaching course at the end of the year. It's not announced yet. Don't don't worry. Don't be thinking, I've got to do this. Um, I haven't written it yet. It's going to get written. I've ha I had a um, moment when I was going through all of this with someone else the other day, and then I started to talk to somebody else about it as well, and then I thought, oh, I can do a podcast on it, and that kind of tells you you've got to do something bigger, doesn't it? That's like the finally the cricket bat to the head of, you know, you're now doing on a podcast, you really have to give this stuff out as a step by step, um, you know, how do you do this with your clients? So, you know, because we've got the wheel of life we can do, we've got all of the other aspects of their life that support them, that support their health. Because our emotions affect our health, and we all agree on that, don't we? Everybody listening, you're not nodding your head, hopefully, going, <laughs> totally, you know, if we're really grumpy, that's going to really affect our health in the long run. If we're, um, if we're unwell, it makes us down, that affects our health. It's harder to get better if we're feeling down. It's harder to do things if we're feeling down. So our emotions are totally affecting our health. It affects what we eat, so many things. So there is the full system um, within our modalities, within our healing modalities and our ingestive modalities that mean that coaching the client will give them a better result, will give the client that much better, um, not just result, but feeling an emotion and they will have a better understanding of where they're starting out, where they're going and where their future is. By setting up a system of coaching with your clients or along with that program, you know, it really helps us with all sorts of things within our business. So our paperwork, we sit there in that first one, okay, I need to give you a motivation profile, then I'm going to give you which piece of paper is going to go next. At the very, and of course they're not pieces of paper now, are they? Um, which, <laughs> which PDF am I going to send you? Um, well, not which piece of paper am I going to hand you? So I always give out a diet diary always without fail I do like I have my own um, but for commercial purposes the really good one of course is um, the companies have several companies have got really good ones so have a look through the companies and have a look at theirs but I mean I do have my own so really think about what the pieces of paper are that we need to have so my first appointment I've got some I've got a little booklet of Obviously, it's not a booklet now. Um, it's PDFs of uh, breakfast recipes and I've got some of lunch recipes because I'm a great believer in you only change one meal of the day. You don't change the three meals of the day. You pick one. You pick breakfast or you pick lunch or you pick dinner. I tend to start with 
breakfast or lunch um, over dinner because when we explain to the client, so I say, well, you know, at the moment you're not having breakfast, which might be actually fine, but you're not having breakfast. Instead, on your way to work, you're snatching a muffin. You know, let's look at some healthy choices. So let's figure out how we can change this breakfast. So then I produce my little breakfast alternatives. And and then I say, you know, once we've sorted out this breakfast, then we can look at your lunch because you really do need to have a salad and some apple cider vinegar there. And then for dinner, it'd be really good if we had some vegetables and some protein in there. We really need to think about the quantity and the quality. You know, perhaps you know, it might be a good idea if you made um, good dinners so that you've got the leftover for lunch the next day. But at the moment, we're just going to work on the breakfast. So you tell them what you want in the future and you tell them what you want now. And then I'd say about 70% of people after I've said, we're just working on the breakfast. I don't want to overwhelm you because, you know, that salad at lunch and um, rather than the pie. And, and I repeat the changes that I want for lunch and dinner. And then I circle back around and I say, but I don't want to overwhelm you on me with change it's hard to change and I do understand that so let's just work where we can and we'll just start with breakfast for now chances are they'll come back and they'll say you know what you said about that salad at lunch I've actually started doing that I feel really good on it and we have done some much better dinners and I noticed that last week we only had one takeaway rather than three and things like that and you just sit there and go wow that's amazing I love it you're incredible you should be so proud of yourself That's something that's really bothering me right now. I'm hearing it everywhere. People are saying, I'm so proud of you. No, 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 no. I don't care if you're proud of me. I need to be proud of myself. So because I am the only one at the end of the day who's going to get up and make my breakfast, make my lunch and make my dinner. And so it's really important that we do say to children that they should be proud of themselves because they can't be relying on other people all of the time to be proud of them. It's just something I'm just one of those things to sort of get that out there for my little rant. Um, it's just something I'm noticing. And anyway, back to paperwork or PDFs. So having those pieces of paper ready to go, which, as I said, are in the academy and will definitely there be even more of them in the coaching course, really means that we have flow in clinic. It really means that we can, when we're seeing our client, We can be going, okay, this is what we're doing today. This is where we're starting. But here's your homework for next time. Giving them homework means that they become involved in their care. So it's not just saying take this tablet, drink this product, eat these foods. They're not there's not a continuous involvement. So every single time a client comes back to me, they bring the diet diary. So every time I see them, it's like, here's another diet diary. Here's another diet diary. So A couple of the companies have got fillable forms now, so you can use theirs and you can send them the fillable form for online for your client if you're working online. And it just means that they're actively participating. If for the seven days leading up to your appointment, you have to write down your breakfast, lunch and dinner, and I've talked to you about the changes I'd like you to make in your breakfast, and you've agreed to those changes because of the way we've talked about them. I haven't told you. I've we've negotiated, we've dealt with barriers, we've looked at it from all the different angles and that person has agreed that they need a different breakfast or a different lunch, whatever, and they're willing to work towards that and make those changes, then that means that for those seven days leading up to seeing me, because it might be a fortnight later, they've had a week of doing it themselves and remembering what I've said, but then that that, you know, at day seven after seeing me, they're beginning to forget, they're beginning to think, oh no, you know, I'll I'll just have Cheerios or something. I don't even know what they are. I just, so (laughs) that word just popped into my head. I have absolutely no idea what they are. I will go to the supermarket later today and I will have a look. But, um, you know, they've gone back to the other, the system you didn't want them in. But at day seven, you've handed them, you said to them, I want this diary filled out this diet diary before I see you next, then they have to make that conscious effort. They have to participate in their own care because that's what we've got a lot of, you know, and that's with the line, I'm so proud of you. That means you don't really have to participate in what you're doing because you don't have to be proud of yourself. And that means that you can fall off the wagon or you can drop out of doing something because nobody has said to you, you're it you know, good on you, congratulate yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You should be so proud of yourself for doing this and putting yourself forward. So just a little thing there. So with our paperwork, we need to have 
I feel, personally, it's a great idea to use a motivation profile. It is a great idea to have some to have breakfast, lunch and dinner recipes on hand that you can hand them. Um, it is a great idea to have some like a diet diary um, and other fillable forms. So I have health forms. I have a um, I'd forgotten all about it, actually, and it's not in the academy. Um, I've got a home detox form that I gave people, used to give people. Um, there's different ones, you know, if they're coming to you and they seem unwell and then you go through everything and it turns out there's mould. So I've got a form for them to go around the house and, you know, totally forgotten about that one. Um, so there's all these different forms that I have for different people depending on their problem and it means that they have homework, they participate in their care and they're more likely to achieve their care outcomes that you have renamed. So from that nebulous, I want to get healthy to eating three healthy meals a day, um, losing some weight and whatever else comes in with that originally nebulous goal. So using that motivation profile helps sort out that nebulous goal and bring that nebulous goal into a real goal that has, you know, that has a time frame that is succinct and that is really going somewhere for our client. So that was my thoughts on paperwork. So if you've got anything that you would like to share with me, then please do email me. And if you've enjoyed today, then I would love for you to review. If you've made it all the way to the end, then you must have enjoyed some part of this. So please go and review me, preferably a five-star review if you wouldn't mind, on iTunes or wherever it is that you're enjoying this podcast from. Because it's been absolutely brilliant being with you, um, doing whatever it is you're doing. For me, it's driving when I'm listening to podcasts, but um, or walking. Walking is the other huge podcast listening time for me. So I don't know what you're up to, but I really hope that you've managed to do all the things you meant to do and you've enjoyed listening to this at the same time. So I will look forward to seeing you or speaking to you, hearing from you um, and you listening to me at the next one. So thank you for joining me. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.